All right, here's the deal. I have a love-hate relationship with the Hermes Constance. It's constantly <laughs> on and off my wish list and then on again and then off again. So I just kind of want to share my thoughts on why I think that is. And I also want to suggest five bag alternatives to the Constance if, like me, you just can't make up your mind on whether it's a bag worth adding to your collection. So if that sounds interesting to you, then please keep on watching. Now, I mentioned in an earlier video that of all the bags created by Hermes, the Constance brings out the highest level of mixed emotions for me, as in there there are Hermes bags that I know I love, right? And there are Hermes bags that I know I don't love, to put it politely. But let's just say when it comes to the constants, I just can't sort out my own feelings like 99% of the time, whether I really like the bag or I really hate it. So clearly, I don't have one in my collection. But just for eye candy, I do have all of the Hermes bags that I do own out here behind me. And yes, I do have collector tendencies, which means if I'm really on the quest to collect something like Hermes quota bags, which that is a discussion for another day, but let's just say if I were on that quest, then I'd kind of need the full set, you know, in order for the collection to be complete. Now, on one hand, I truly do think the Constance is a beautifully constructed bag. Like, I love the sizes that are available, the structure, the strap, like it has so much going on for it. Again, not to rehash what I've already said before, but my biggest beef, besides the price, has to be the fact that the Constance ages the poorest compared to all the other Hermes quota bags. I'm sorry, y'all, but the Constance does not age well. The pre-love market is full of beautifully preserved Birkins and Kellys, especially Kellys, and I've been eyeing some vintage box Kellys that are just absolutely breathtaking, like from the 80s, and they have just aged like fine wine. Like they are, oh my gosh, they're just intoxicating. But just take a gander at Constance's on the pre-love market, and I guarantee you, you can hardly say the same for the Constance. However, since I've never owned a Constance, I should throw in this caveat that I don't know if it's because the Constance is a much more wearable bag. So by the time they typically hit the pre-love market, they've already been through the ringer and have been lovingly used to death versus like Birkins or Kelly's where they do tend to be more like collector or investment pieces. Um, so they may not see the same daily action and rough usage or is it simply the fact that the Constans really does wear or age more poorly than the Birkin or the Kelly? As of 2023, the Constance 18 in Epsom will run you just shy of $9,000 here in the U.S. pre-tax. And the Constance 24 is just over $10,000 in U.S. dollars. Now, if you are lucky enough to get your hands on the Constance in Europe, like in Paris, for instance, the price difference converted to U.S. is pretty substantial. I mean, we're talking about almost a $2,000 difference. So it will run you closer to 7,000 USD for the 18 and 8,000 for the 24. Plus you get up to 10 to 12% back as your VAT refund. So all in all, I think it's worth a trip to Paris to try your luck there. Now, if Paris or even in-store purchases, wherever you are is out of the question for you, then you can always consider the pre-love market. However, since the Constance is considered a quota bag, chances are you will find yourself paying a premium even on the pre love market for a bag that's pre-loved and by that pre-beat up and so that's another main thing I have about the Constance like let's talk about some of the common signs of wear and tear that you're likely to find on the pre-loved market so the most common signs of wear or should we say the most obvious signs of wear seem to be the giant H buckle especially if it's in palladium like nine out of ten times I guarantee you the buckle is going to be tarnished it's going to be scratched and or pitted now the gold and the rose gold hardware does seem to wear a teensy bit better. Um, you still often find tarnishing and scratching, but pitting seems to be less of an issue. Again, I can't say for sure. This is just going off of the inventory that's currently available on the pre-loved market. Now, because the buckle is so huge, it's, it's really hard to ignore the wear and tear to it. Now, the other common sign seems to be fraying of the strap. So this may be due just to the nature of how it's constructed and how the strap is attached to the body of the bag with like these two metal prongs. So there's bound to be some rubbing on the stitches of the strap, which will eventually lead to fraying, maybe some cracks along the face of the strap or even splitting along the seams of these straps. The next type of wear has more to do with the leather. 
So Constance's most often come in Epsom, followed by Evercolor or Evergreen, and other heritage leathers like box leather. When you find a Constance in Epsom pre-loved, Epsom is a naturally harder wearing material, so I feel like issues like scratches to the leather, color transfer, discoloration, they just seem to be less of an issue. Although I have seen Epsom bags with pretty heavy loss of color or scratches around the H buckle where you're likely to have a lot of like fingernail contact um, opening and getting in and out of the bag. But it's especially when you start to get into like the Evercolor and box materials that you're more likely to find wear to the leather and to the actual body of the bag. And that's why as much as I love the Constance, it's just not a priority for me to hunt down pre-loved and absolutely not a priority to try to acquire directly from the boutique. But I'm not gonna lie, every time I see one, my heart definitely still does a little double take because my gut reaction is still, dang, that is such a stunning bag. So if you're someone like me, that just has this ongoing love-hate push-pull relationship with the Constance, then maybe here are five Constance-inspired bags that can help you scratch your Constance itch. Now, just know, I think you have to recognize first what's driving that itch. I'll talk about all of these alternatives in terms of what type of itch they are best suited for, but before I even start, let's just acknowledge that there are some itches that just can't be scratched, right? Like if the itch is really that you want to have the full Hermes Trinity of quota bags, then no other replacement bag will fully satisfy your itch for the Constance, and that's just something you have to come to terms with. So either bite the bullet and make a plan to add one to your collection, or just realize that and be okay with the fact that you will not have the full Hermes Holy Trinity set. Which brings me to my first itch. If the itch has more to do with just wanting an Hermes bag like the Constance, then Hermes does have cheaper alternatives to the Constance like the Rulli, which like the Constance comes in two sizes. You have a mini size that retails around 77.50 last I checked, and a regular size that retails around 8,500. And so while yes, the Rulli is cheaper, it's not cheaper by a whole lot. It's still expensive, but the pros is that it is easier to get and again, easier by Hermes standards. I typically find Rulis dropping on the Hermes website like on a weekly basis. And oftentimes I don't have an issue adding those to cart. Plus these are easily available pre-loved, often in excellent condition and below retail. Now I think the regular is technically a size 23 compared to the Constance 24. So it's just a smidge smaller, but like the Constance, it's a crossbody bag. Although the strap placements are different, there are a lot of similarities both both have non-adjustable, non-removable straps. Both have a similar really boxy rectangular shape. The construction of the side gussets are also fairly similar. So all in all, they are pretty comparable. Now the biggest difference has to do with the flat closure. And the biggest pro that the Rulis has going for it over the Constants is that it doesn't have that giant H buckle. It has the really nice Ruli buckle instead, which I think it's such a sleek, minimal, classy look. Now from a practicality standpoint, it has less metal surface area to be scuffed up, which is fantastic. Now, perhaps the one downside is the security related to the flap closure, since for the Ruli bag, the flap really just slips into the buckle while the Constance actually clicks shut. So just kind of keep that in mind. Now, if your itch has less to do with wanting an Hermes bag, but more to do with wanting a bag of that style, then the great news is that there are so many options out there. The even better news is that these options also come at various price points. So I'll talk about the remaining four bags from least to most expensive based on boutique retail prices. Granted, you can find almost all of these pre-loved below retail. And if I can find some good ones, I'll be sure to link them down in the description box below. So if you are wanting the Constance look but for less, you should consider the Demillier Vancouver bag. Now, depending on which retailer you are purchasing this bag from, I've seen this most often retailing between like the mid four to $500 range here in the US. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the original size is comparable to the Constance 24. It measures about nine inches long and they do have a smaller version of the Vancouver bag, which is more comparable to the size 18. Now, the Vancouver bag comes in a decent variety of leathers, colors, and finishes. And um, so that's a giant plus. 
although the options that I'm seeing now online are more muted and neutral. I don't know if that's a seasonal thing or if it's just what they have for their permanent line. For some, that may not be an issue, but for others, especially if you are looking for like a bright or fun option, then these may feel a little too formal or a little too muted. Also, the buckle kind of looks like a really skinny, super skinny H, but not really. I think it looks like a really nice design element as opposed to like an actual brand or a logo. Now, just FYI, I don't think I've seen the hardware in any other color besides gold. Now, the most constant reminiscent aspect of the Vancouver bag has got to be the strap attachment. Like the Constance, the straps are attached on the top with two metal prongs. Um, where the strap actually wins out over the Constance is that you can actually adjust the length of it. Now, the construction of the body of the bag itself is more comparable to like the newer, or should I say like the re-editions of the Constance 24 with just like a single cassette instead of like a double cassette structure. So I think the body of the bag has a really beautiful, nice, sleek look that doesn't look overly boxy. And all in all, I think it's a beautiful bag for the price point and it gives you a similar aesthetic and vibe as the Constance. Now there's a bit of a price jump from the Demilier bag to this NYX bag, but I'll be honest, this is probably my favorite on the list, and that would be the C de Cartier mini shoulder bag. Now this does come in a very limited number of colors, but this tan version with the acetate logo detail, oh my gosh, this is an absolute dream. Like this stole my heart when I first saw it. Now this one retails for $27.50, which by today's designer bag standards is on the more affordable side. So a couple of things to note, the strap design like the Demilier Vancouver bag is spot on to the Constance bag. Now the dimensions do seem a little bit different. It looks like it's square compared to the Constance. I wish the website had better pictures so we can really see the bag um, with more precision and see what the compartments are like, but there seems to be three compartments, two smaller ones, and one main compartment. I wouldn't be surprised if the capacity of this bag is a little less just based on how it's constructed but I think for me the star feature of this bag has to be the logo detail. I think it's stunning. I love the tortoise shell effect of the acetate. Now I know the Constance H buckle does come in special editions where it's not just a solid metal buckle but I honestly don't think I've seen a version of the buckle quite as beautiful as this. Now this also reminds me of like the various pearl or lacquer inlays that you can find on the Louis Vuitton Capucines. Again, it's absolutely stunning. If I had to pick one of the five, like this would be the one I'd pick. Now the C de Cartier also does come like in a clutch style bag that has a more elegant chain to it but I haven't seen it in the tan with the acetate logo finish. As far as I know, this only comes in the mini shoulder bag size at the moment. And again, the other colorways are fine. I would love to see a similar acetate detail on those other colors, but this tan one here, this for me is just where it's at. Next on the list, let's talk about the Gucci 1955 Horse Bitch Shoulder Bag. Now this also comes in various sizes, like a mini version, a shoulder bag version, etc. So prices and dimensions are going to vary, but let's just stick to the original size for now. So this in the leather version currently retails at $32.50, but if you are wanting to stay under the 3K mark, you can get the canvas version for about $28.90. Now for me, the Cartier version still seems like a better deal since that is at least a full calfskin bag. Now, this horse bit bag is what you would get, I think, if the Constance and the Ruli had a baby because the flap is really a mixture of both bags, right? Maybe leaning a little more towards the Ruli because it also just has like a slip in design like into the horse bit buckle. Now, P.S. If you went for the mini bag version, keep in mind the price is still going to be $32.50 for the leather variation and $28.90 for the canvas variation. So it's exactly the same price as the larger size. The main difference is you get an additional canvas strap in the traditional Gucci red and green webbing. Now, if you were to compare the structure of both bags, however, there is quite a difference. The mini bag is a single compartment bag while the regular bag has three compartments and you can see the difference most clearly like from the side. And P.S. as an honorary mention, I came across this so black version the other day and my heart skipped a beat. I, I don't know when this latest obsession with so black bags came about but I am definitely thinking about prioritizing adding a so black something to my collection in the near future. I don't think this is going to be it though but it definitely made me do a double take.
I'm also really confused about the sizing for this bag. Like this is in a size small and it's about eight inches long. However, the regular minis are 8.1 inches long and the regular versions are 9.8 inches long. So go figure. Now the last bag I wanna talk about, or I guess this more accurately would be an entire bag line, um, that would be the Triumph line by Celine. I'm not even gonna to try to count up how many variations they have in their Triumph line, but on average, you're looking at the mid three to $4,000 range depending on the variation. Now, I don't own anything from Celine. I don't foresee myself owning anything from Celine in the near future. And it's sad because I do think their designs are so classy and beautiful, but take like the classic Celine box bag, for instance, there's nothing so, so spectacular about it that I would bump this up in priority. But I will say, I saw this specific Triumph bag in the original size, I think, in a yellow, and I thought it was so gorgeous, especially how it creates such a beautiful tonal look with the gold logo clasp. I believe the color is technically called pollen. They also have another one in the teen size and the yellow is a little more pastel. I think it's called sunlight and I think that one's gorgeous too. Now, if there's one thing you should know about me is that I don't do colors, okay? So it was really surprising to me that these yellow ones were the ones that really stood out to me the most over all the other variations available. The other one that I'm surprised I looked at more than once is just like the classic Triumph in the canvas version. Again, nothing that I think I will prioritize purchasing, but I actually think all of the elements of the bag, like the canvas, the leather trimming, like the colors, I just think they come together so beautifully. So again, these are gorgeous bags and I have a lot of appreciation for them. I just don't know if I would personally be adding any to my collection. Now there you have it. Those are my five bag alternatives to the Constance. Here we have different price points, different brands, but all of these bags give you the feel of the Constance and hopefully they provide you with all of the joy associated with the Constance and none of the pain. Now, if you have others to throw in the mix, please, please, please let me know. For instance, I thought of mentioning the Bandit bag by Coach, but the shape of the bag is definitely a little too elongated to be comparable, but it also similarly has like the two metal prongs that attach the strap to the top. However, the price point for that bag is fantastic if you want to check that out. Now, anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you did, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell and I look forward to seeing you again.